Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A few days ago, I did my very first video on On One Photo Raw 2024. In that video, I mainly demoed a new feature called Brilliance AI, but I also did mention that this version of the application has much better highlight recovery than previous versions of the app. In today's video, I want to show you exactly what I'm talking about. I also want to talk about another new feature. And for those of you that are new to On One Photo Raw, I want to do a simple edit in it because On One Photo Raw really has like all the best editing features of Lightroom, all the best photo editing features of Photoshop, and a lot of the best features of Luminar Neo all wrapped up into one app. So there's a lot here. And if you're new to the application and you go over to their website and download the trial version, you may not know where to start. So I want to do a simple edit to give you an idea of what you can do with On One Photo Raw 2024. Now, this improved highlight recovery, what am I talking about? Well, you can see I have an image open up here. It's a Sony RAW file. You can see it's DSC 1760. It's opened up into On One Photo Raw 2024. I also have On One Photo Raw 2023 opened up with a copy of this RAW file. So it's the exact same RAW file. It just says copy in the title. So it's the exact same thing. In this older version of On One Photo Raw, now it's unedited, nothing has been done to it. If I go to the highlight slider and I move it to the right and move it to left, you could just see, well, first of all, when I move it to the right, you can see how it's kind of making the shadows in the midtones a little darker. So instead of really making the highlights brighter, it's kind of making everything else darker. And if I go to the left, it is making the highlights a little darker. So it really works in an odd way. And this was one of my main complaints with previous versions of On One Photo Raw in that this highlight slider really didn't work properly in my opinion. It just was wacky. And I found at times that it was difficult for me to get a good edit because I couldn't really adjust the slider in a proper way. Well, they fixed that with On One Photo Raw 2024. Now, if I go to this highlight slider and I move it to the right, it's making the highlights a lot brighter. And if I move it to left, it's making the highlights darker. So you can see they improved it quite a bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do a simple edit. Now, now that we got that out of the way, and along the way, I want to just talk about a new feature that I really can't demo yet. And you'll understand once I show it to you. But right now I'm going to do an edit on this image in On One Photo Raw 2024. Now, this is the way I go about doing things like start to finish. Of course, you know, it isn't written in stone. You may want to start in a different location, maybe do the same things, but just do it in different order. You, of course, could do that. It is a non-destructive raw editor. So any edits you do to the raw file will not be written to the raw file. All the edits will be written to the On One catalog or there is... Uh, something up here if you go up to preferences and I believe it's uh, where is it files yeah right here if you check this box save on one sidecar files for non-destructive edits and metadata if you check that box not only will it write the edits to the on one catalog it also will have an on one sidecar file next to the raw file and that sidecar file will contain all the edits and also contain any metadata. So keywords and things like that, that you enter to the metadata will be recorded there as well. But in either case, whether you check this or don't check this, the raw file is untouched. So you don't have to worry about corrupting the original raw file. Now, as far as the way I go about doing an edit on something like this, now this is assuming I'm not going to use Brilliance AI at all. I did talk about that in that last video. And by the way, if you haven't seen that video, I'll have it linked in the description below this video. What I like to do is I like to crop and I like to kind of fix like tilted buildings when it's a cityscape such as this first. And you can see how these buildings, the taller ones in the background are kind of falling backwards. So I wanna fix that. And to do that, I'm going to go down to transform. So I'm gonna turn that on and open that up. And really all I need to do is go to this vertical slider and just move it to left a little bit. And you can see as I do that, I'm getting the buildings to stand more upright. Now, unfortunately, they're not kind of on equal planes. So I'm making this one upright, but this one's still falling back a slight bit. And if I go a little too far, it will kind of overcorrect. 
So I just got to find a happy medium. So I think right about there looks pretty good. You could see when I did that though, it gave me these blank pixels over here. So now I need to crop. The crop tool is over here on the left-hand panel. We'll just click on that. And I want to use the original ratio aspect ratio, which is two to three. I'm just going to keep that. And I'm just going to pull down from the top because I have a lot of sky in the image. I don't have much down here at the bottom. So I, I'll take away from the top. And because I'm keeping the original ratio, it's pulling all the sides in, at least the top left and right sides in. And I'll just pull them in until all those blank pixels are cropped away. And I think right about there. And then I'm just going to click this little check mark. And there, now there's my cropped image. Now, the next thing I like to do is tone and color. So I'll go up here to tone and color. And by the way, um, actually, I should add, I always recommend that if you're going to do noise reduction, to do it early in your workflow. If this image had noise in it, it was shot at the lowest ISO, native ISO in this camera, which I believe was ISO 100. So um, there really isn't any noise. But if there were noise, I would do that now. So I'd go to noise and sharpening and I would use no noise AI uh, to take care of that. In this case, I don't have to do that. I'll just go to tone and color. What I like to do is kind of look at the image and see, well, what, what is standing out like a sore thumb? And to me, the midtones are really muddy and dark. So I'll go right to the midtone slider and do that first. Now, conversely, if the highlights were too bright or too, um, too dark, if that jumped out at me, I'd go to the highlight slider. And if maybe the shadows were too dark, or too bright, I'd go to the shadow slider. So it's one of these three sliders. I just determine what this specific image needs most. I think it's the highlights need to be opened, or the midtones, I'm sorry, need to be opened up. So I'm just going to open up those midtones. Then I'm going to come in, I'm going to bring down the highlights a touch. We'll open up the shadows just a little more. Now I'm going to get a white or black black point. Uh, those of you familiar with Lightroom know you could hold the alt or option key in to get a white or black point. With Previous versions, uh, like On One Photo Raw 2021 and, and prior, uh, you could do that here, but they've taken that away from uh, this later versions of On One Photo Raw, I think from On One Photo Raw 2022 on up. Uh, the Alt Option key doesn't work, but you can hold in the J key. You do have to hold it in. And if you hold in the J key and you move the white slider to the right, you can see as I start going too far, I'll start to get red overlaid on the image. That means I'm blowing out those highlights. And typically I don't like to blow out highlights at all. So I'll just back that off until all that red dissipates right about there. Similarly, I'll hold in that J key again. And I'll go to this black slider and move this to the left. You can see that blue is now being overlaid on the darkest parts of the image. That means I'm crushing the shadows. That's absolute black. I don't mind uh, crushing the shadows a little bit or at least having absolute black in my landscape images. Uh, for me, that seems... It gives me a lot of like tonal range. I have absolute black and almost absolute white. The reason why I don't like to blow out highlights is because if I were to print this, uh, no ink would be put down on the paper there at all. So I prefer not to blow out the highlights for that reason. So I'll do something like this. Now, next would be something like structure or haze, but I don't like to use that. I prefer to use an effect for that, for structure at least. In haze, there's no haze here. And if white balance were a problem, I, of course, would fix this uh, at this point as well. Uh, everything looks fine as far as that is concerned. And I'm not going to add any saturation or vibrance. I, again, if it needs it, I prefer to use an effect for that. And speaking of effects, that's probably where I'll go next. And that's where I want to mention a new feature that I really can't demo yet. I'm going to open up this left panel. And you can see right here, there's something called AI Style Advisor. And if I roll that open... You can see there's my style. And if I click on that, you'll notice that still learning your style, add effects to more photos. That's why I can't demo it. What you need to do is use effects, the effects module, and add effects to images. And I don't know how many images you need to do. I have heard that it's like 200. But once you add a lot of effects to a lot of different images, it will tend to learn how you use the effects in on one photo raw 2024 and it will replicate the way you use effects when you go to this um this area of the presets so you could actually click on your own style and add it automatically i think that's a really cool feature because that would save a lot of time so 
uh, this morning, yesterday, I was editing a bunch of images and on one, I probably did maybe 30, hoping that this would come alive so I could properly demo it, but it hasn't. But I will, as soon as it is available, I will demo it. Uh, but until then, know it's there. And um, after you do a lot of edits, you'll have your own style uh, kind of preserved here so that you could then apply it to future images going forward. I'm going to close that down. Now, typically, I, I tend to use the same type of effects all the time. So I anticipate that my style will be effective for me because since I tend to do the same things. So I'm going to go to effects. And the first thing I want to do, just looking at the image, is the sky's bright. I don't, I like the sky bright though. I don't really want it darker, but the buildings and the water, they're kind of bringing me down. They're going to drab, right? So what I want to do is I want to brighten those up, but I do not want to do anything with the sky. So I want to brighten the buildings and the water, everything around the buildings, but not touch the sky at all. On one makes this super easy to do because on one has AI built in where it finds specific structures. It will find a building, it will find grass, it'll find a man made roadway, it will find water, it will find the sky. And you could specify what you want to edit, what specific part of the image you want to edit. Now, there's a number of different ways to do this. When I go to add filter, you can see over here that if I just hover over architecture, you could see it has a little red or a little red. It has a red overlay over the buildings, or most of the buildings, man-made. You can see it's mainly on the, like the side of the, by the water there. It is uh, bleeding off into the water a little bit. Flora, those are the trees. Natural ground, that's the grass. Water, sky. All right. It still isn't perfect, though, but the sky is perfect, right? So since I don't want to do any edits to the sky, I want to do edits to everything else except the sky. And if I went in and checked all these boxes, like checked architects, check this, check this, check this, check this, you'd see how there's still gaps here and it just doesn't, it's not perfect. There is a better way. So what I'm going to do is I am going to select the sky. And what I'm going to do is go to a tone enhancer because I want to make the everything but the sky brighter. Now. Any edits I do, like I'll show you, is will affect the sky. I don't want that. So what you do is click right here on this mask. You'll get the masking properties uh, dialog box. And I want to invert this mask. All I need to do is click right here. And you'll notice then the mask is inverted. I could close that down. Now when I come to the exposure, you can see I can make everything but the sky brighter. You can see how that works out real well. So that's that. Now we're going to add another filter. One of my favorite filters. Well, what am I saying? One of my favorite filters. My favorite filter is dynamic contrast. So I'll just do that. And you can see like what it does, right? Okay. So I'm just going to tweak up. By default, it uses this natural uh, style. You can see there's a surreal style, a soft style. You go to this drop down, there's some others. There's a texture enhancer. But what I typically do is I go to the natural style and I'll take the small, which the natural style has at zero. I'll just tweak that up, usually somewhere around five-ish, but I don't even look at the number I'm dialing it up to. I look at the image itself and see what it's doing. Now, there are times when I apply it and I don't like what it did to the sky. If, that's the, uh, if that happens, what I'll do is I'll click this mask again and instead, I'll go to Mask AI and go to Region, and I'll, in this case, would go to the sky again, apply it, but then invert it so it's affecting everything but the sky. You could see how I did that. Now you could see it's, whoop, it's still affecting the sky. I must not have done that right. Let's invert it. There it is. That's better. I must have screwed something up. All right. So you can see how it's affecting everything but the sky. Although I didn't mind it, what it was doing to the sky this time. All right. Now, the next thing I like to do is I like to add a sunshine filter, but I like to add it to the sky only. So I'm going to go to add filter. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to sky. And then I'm going to go to the sunshine filter. And usually for the sunshine filter, I like to add the strong preset right here. But then I go in and I take the warmth to the right, usually a little bit to warm it up a little more. 
and I make it a little more saturated. Now you can see when I did that, it affected the tone. So what I need to do is add a tone enhancer to the sky only. So I'll click add. I know this seems to be sometimes complicated, but it's very easy to use once you get used to it. I'll go to sky, go to tone enhancer, and I'm going to just pull exposure down a little bit. Maybe pull the highlights down a little bit. Pull the whites down a little bit. Now oh, it's starting to look cool. All right, now I'm going to go to add filter, and I want to add this uh, filter to everything. So it's something to do with color, either color adjustments, color balance, or color enhancer. I think it's going to be color enhancer, and I want to just add a bit of saturation maybe. Um, I'm going to add filter again, and I'm going to go to uh, color balance. Oh no, I didn't want that. Now if you don't want anything, let's say you made a mistake like I just did, just click this little X and you'll delete that effect. So I'll go to add filter and I'll go to color adjustment and I want to go to yellow and I want to make the yellows brighter. So anything that's yellow, you can see those trees getting brighter. I'm going to increase the saturation of those just a little bit. Then I'm going to go to green, and we're going to make the greens a little darker. I typically do this, those of you that watch my videos. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now, if, for example, you're doing all this and you're saying, well, you know, I need to readjust something, you could just go back to the develop module and you could readjust anything you want. So let's just say, oh, I just want to bring the brightness, the overall brightness down. You could come back in and readjust, then go back to effects. And I'd say I'm almost done. I'll just add a vignette with the effect. And I'm, I like to add the strong vignette. So you can see there's all these preset vignettes. There's more under here. Uh, but a lot of people like the big softy one. I don't care for that one. I prefer the strong one, but then I take the brightness and I back it off a little bit. Something more like that. So there's a before and there's an after. And that's it. That's done. That's the way I do it. That's the way I go about editing uh, images in On One Photo Raw. 2024. Now looking at this image, it's a bit overdone. I, um, I could come back in though, like I said, and uh, readjust things like dynamic contrast, I think is, is just too much. So I'll back that off and go back to the develop module. So you can come back in, you could jump around, bring up that a little more. Yeah, I think that looks pretty decent. So that's the basics of editing in On One Photo Raw 2024. You guys want me to do more videos on editing in On One Photo Raw 2024? Let me know in the comments. There's so much you could do here. Um, I've done in the past with older versions of On One. I've uh, demonstrated how to edit a portrait. If you're familiar with Luminar Neo, it has pretty much all those portrait tools that Neo has. It has an On One Photo Raw. You could swap skies. I've done several videos on how to swap a sky. It uses AI to swap a sky again. Luminar Neo has something like that. Photoshop does as well. Um, it's here. Like I said, it's a combination of Lightroom Photoshop and Luminar Neo. Um, but let me know in the comments what you'd like me to do, what types of videos you'd like me to do in On One Photo Raw 2024, and I'd be more than happy to do them. But mainly in this video, I just wanted to mention uh, that new feature that I hope to demo someday soon called My Style. Uh, hopefully I'll do enough edits where I will actually be able to show you this. And I wanted to also uh, show you the improved uh, highlight recovery. And by the way, I should add, none of the other sliders have changed. Uh, so the midtone shadows, whites and blacks work the same way. It's just the highlight slider that has been um, improved. The other ones worked fine in the past. It was that highlights one that I always had a problem with and it always bothered me. I always had a hard time getting a good edit. Not always, but I often though would had have a hard time getting a good edit because that highlight slider wasn't working right. Uh, but now it does, thankfully. So that's it for this video. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.